Hey guys, welcome. This is section 12.2 on geometric sequences. Okay, we've been looking at a lot of arithmetic sequences. Uh, now we're going to be looking at a geometric sequence. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, before I start, make sure you have these uh, notes already with you so you can um, be ready to follow me along. And second of all, it looks like when I was writing these notes, I was still stuck on arithmetic sequences and I forgot to change or update the wording in some of these. So let's do that right now. Right here in the objective, you can cross out arithmetic like I'm doing. Look how beautiful that looks. And change it to geometric and same thing you know what here there figure out a way to check to change them a little bit more easier so change that to geometric in both the uh, essential question and in the objective and now we can continue okay <clears throat> so let's get started by exploring some geometric sequences here we go so what you guys have here is let's fill in the blank already is what we call a fractal tree fractal tree tree pretty obvious because of what they look like right they, they have little branches that they're extending and they're growing and fractal from fraction right each new branch is a fraction of the original of the original branch and there's a different number of branches for each one that comes up so <clears throat> it says here in the description that this fractal tree the same number of branches are added to the end of each branch in consecutive stages in the example shown, there's many different types of fractal trees, by the way. In this one, the each branch gets two new branches. So you guys can see, there's one branch here, but now it gained two branches. And now each one of those two branches gained two branches. And then each one of those gained two branches, and so on. It's going to keep going like that. Also, each additional branch is one half the length of the previous branch. That means that each one of these two right here is half as big as this one right here. So, for example, let's say this is 4 centimeters, then this one's 2 centimeters. And if this one's 2 centimeters, then that this one's 1 centimeter, and so on, right? Each one is one half of the length of the previous branch. And it's also at a 45 degree angle from the direction of the parent branch. So, if this one is facing north, this one is 45 degrees that way, and this one's 45 degrees that way. Which means that together they add up to 90, they, mo they form perfect right angles right there. Uh, from the direction of the parent branch. The first four iterations, stages 0 to 3, are shown. Here's stage 0, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. We could keep going, but you can tell that it's probably going to get pretty complicated at, at a, a stage 4 or 5 already. All right, let's fill in the uh, table over here with the information that we have. What we care about in this table is how many new branches the tree is getting. Okay, so for example, in stage 0, there's one new branch, the starting branch. In stage 1, there's two new branches. We don't care about the old one anymore, just the new ones. In stage 2, there's four new branches. In stage 3, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new branches, and so on. So, one, two, four, eight. Hopefully, right away, you guys can see the pattern there. The numbers are doubling. So if we keep that pattern going, then stage 4 will have 16, and stage 5 will have 32, and stage 6 will have 64. We can write all of those numbers in terms of 2. Why 2? Because that is how many new branches it's gaining, right? Every single time it's gaining two, 2 new branches. So every single time what's happening is you're taking this original branch, and you multiply times 2 to get that one. Then you multiply times 2 to get that one. Then you multiply times 2 to get that one, and so on. So what's happening is you start with 1, and then you multiply times 2. And then you take whatever you got, and you multiply times 2. And then you take whatever you got, which is 4, and you multiply times 2, and that gives you 8. You take whatever you got, which is 8, and you multiply times 2, that gives you 16. You take whatever you got, which is 16, you multiply times 2, gives you 32. And you take that 32, multiply times 2, and that's what gave you 64. We can also write all of those in terms of uh, a powers. Each one of those is a power. 2 is obviously 2 to the 1 power. And 4 is 2 squared. And 8 is 2 cubed. The one that maybe didn't seem obvious to you guys is that 1 
is 2 to the 0 power because anything to the 0 power is 1. So it's still a power of 2 just like all of these. All of these are going to be powers of 2. 16, it's 2 to the 4th. And 32 is 2 to the 5th. And 64 is 2 to the 6th. They're all powers of 2. And also what you might notice is that the number of the stage, stage 0, is 2 to the 0. Stage 6 is 2 to the 6, and so on. That is going to continue. So if you're looking for how many new branches you'll have in stage 20, for example, you could just do 2 to the 20th power, and you'll find how many new branches there are. All right, so let's fill in the blanks down here. What you, what we just did, the pattern that we just found, where it's changing by multiplication, it's not changing by adding, right? That was an arithmetic sequence where you're adding the same number every time. That's not happening here. You're multiplying by the same number every time. This list of numbers forms a geometric sequence. This is what we call a geometric sequence. Geometric sequences have a common, not difference, that's what geometric, I mean arithmetic sequences have. They had a common difference, meaning that you were, the difference between two numbers was always the same thing. You're adding or subtracting the same number. These don't have a common difference, they have what we call a common ratio. Something that you multiply by, okay? They have a common ratio between two numbers. There's always a, a um, if you divide them by each other, you're always going to get the same number every single time. So they have a common ratio that relates any term to the previous term. Here's what I mean. If you divide 64 by 32, what do you get? 2. If you divide 8 by 4, you get 2. If you divide 16 by 8, you get 2. If you divide 2 by 1, you get 2. The common ratio is 2. If you divide any two ter consecutive terms, right, the, uh, a term divided by the previous term, you get the same number every single time. That is what we call a common ratio fraction, right? And that's a division that you have, you, uh, a number that you get every time by dividing two consecutive numbers. That's different from, different from the common difference from arithmetic sequences, which means that you're always adding or subtracting the same number. Okay, so just like arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences have explicit and recursive rules. Okay, and I will explain both. I think after explaining recursive rules about arithmetic sequences before, you guys should be able to understand them much easier. Uh, we're going to start by explaining explicit rules. And just like arithmetic sequences, there is a, two different rules depending on if you're considering the initial term position 1 or position 0. Just like in arithmetic sequences, A stands for the initial term. Let's actually write that down. A is the initial term. Just so you guys remember, that's what it is. Same as in arithmetic sequences. And look at what the way it looks. A times, not D plus, right? Not A plus like we did with uh, arithmetic sequences. A times R, no D here, no common difference. R stands for the common ratio. Let's write that down. Which is one of the first things you have to find. Those two things, actually, A and R are the two things that you need to find if you're going to be writing the rule. So, first... Uh, comparing to arithmetic sequences, it's not plus, it's times. It's A times R. It's not D, it's R because it's a common ratio, not a common difference. Also, there's nothing that R is being multiplied by. It's not being multiplied times N or times N minus 1. It's not in parentheses, right? It's a power, which comes from here. Geometric sequences are multiplication sequences, and when you do constant multiplication by the same number, what you're really doing is you're raising it to some power. So that's why the power is up there. The, the n minus 1 is up here. And just like arithmetic, notice that if it's position 1, you write n minus 1. But if it's position 0, it's just n. But it looks exactly the same otherwise, right? Same a, r, and n up here, n minus 1 if it's position 1. 
okay? Study the equation carefully, the rule carefully, because you do have to memorize both this ones, uh, these ones, and the arithmetic ones. So you guys should be able to tell the difference, okay? If you can identify all those differences, you should be able to come up with them. All right, now let's, let's look at the recursive rule. In the recursive rule, look, watch once again how there's two parts to it. Just like arithmetic sequences, you have to first tell me what the initial term is, so f of 1 equals a, if you're looking at it as, at it as position 1. But if you're looking at it as position 0, then you put f of 0, which is a, right? Also still the initial term. And then look at what the other part looks like. They're exactly the same, regardless of its position 1 or if it's position 0. Notice the difference. It's f of n equals r, you start with r, times f of n minus 1. These mean the exact same thing as they did in arithmetic sequences. But let's write it down so we remember. Uh, f of 1 means the first term. The first term. That's that. f of n means the next term. Or whichever term you're looking for. And f of n minus 1 means the previous term. So if you study this carefully, it makes sense. It's saying, to find the next term, take the previous term and multiply it times the common ratio. Like in the example above with the fractal trees, the common ratio was 2, because it was growing by 2. So you found the next term every time by just taking the previous one and multiplying times 2. And that's pretty much what you're going to do. Notice that if it's position 0, it stays the same. The only thing that changes is that we don't want the first term. We want the 0th term, right? Term 0, and that'll give you what the um, initial t value is supposed to be. All right, let's put it into practice. Just make sure you keep all of these formulas handy so you know which ones we're referring to as we work through the problems. Here we go. Number 1, write the explicit and recursive rules for a geometric sequence given a table of values. So here's my table of values and they want me to write the explicit and the recursive. Let's start with the explicit. And then we'll do the recursive afterwards. Zoom in a little more. Start with the explicit. Alright, so for the explicit you need two things. You need R and you need A. Figure out those two things and then you can plug them in. A is easy to find. A means the initial term. In this case, it's 3. Right? You guys see that? The initial term is 3. Also, make sure you pay attention to which position that is. That is position 0. Because that means that you're not going to use this one. You're going to use this one, right? So instead of n minus 1, just n as the power. All right, let's find r. r is what people struggle finding. Sometimes it's really easy. In this case, it's actually pretty easy, okay? The basic idea to find r is to take two terms and divide. For example, I can take 48 and divide by the previous one. Never, never divide this way. Don't divide 24 by 48. Always divide backwards from one term divided by the previous term. 48 divided by 24 is 2. 24 divided by 12 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. If you get all the same number, that, that means that it is a geometric sequence. And whatever that number is, that is the common ratio. So the common ratio here is 2. Now a lot of you guys are thinking, you didn't have to do that. I, you saw it right away that 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. Yeah, and this one is pretty obvious. But there's going to be some where it's not that obvious. So you have to do the division to figure it out. Right? Divide a term by the previous term to find it. All right, once you got those two values, R and A, all you got to do is look back at your formula. We're doing explicit, right? So pick the correct one, either that one or that one. We already said since, since this is position 0, we're going to use this one. So F of N equals A times R to the power of N. F of N equals A times R to the power of N. I put the dot there to represent the multiplication. It's not necessary. If you just put a r to the n power, that's okay. f of n 
let's plug in the values, equals a, which is 3, times r, which is 2, to the power of n. Now, here, the little dot to represent multiplication is not necessary. Just a r to the n is okay. But here it is. If you don't put it, it looks like 32, right? So you want to make sure you know that it's 3 times 2 to the n power. And that's it. That's the explicit rule. Let's do the recursive. Recursive. You know what? Let's split these up so that we don't mix them. Okay, recursive rule. For the recursive rule, what you need to do is tell me two things. All right, let's look back over here. You need to tell me what the initial term is, and then you, you need to tell me what the pattern is, right? Also, make sure you remember that if they gave you the zeroth term, then use this. But still, the pattern is going to look the same, okay? And again, notice that the f of n minus 1 is always going to be there for recursive rules. Just like in arithmetic uh, sequences, it's always there. In geometric sequences, for a recursive rule, it always is there as well. So... In this case, they gave me f of 0, right? They gave me the 0 term, which is 3. So let's start with that. f of 0 equals 3. And, by the way, the word and is not necessary. It's just to show that these two things go together. But if you just write the two parts of it, you're good. So f of 0 equals 3 and f of n equals r times f of n minus 1. That's always what it's going to look like. Look, f of n equals r times f of n minus 1. r, I left it blank because I just want to plug it in right away. We already found what r was from before from the explicit rule. r is 2. So all you got to do is just plug in 2 right there and you're done. That's it. That's the, explicit, the recursive rule. There's both of them. All right, let's do it again with number two. Uh, this time, hopefully, you you guys saw that one as practice, and this is the one where you're like, I really get it now. Okay, so let's start with the explicit rule first. Explicit. For explicit, we need two things. We need a and we need r. Again, remember the difference. In arithmetic sequences, we needed a and d. In this case, we just need a. We need a and r because of the common ratio, not the common difference. A, the initial term, 1 over 25. R, the common ratio, what is it changing by? The best way to find it is to divide. Take any number, any term, and divide it by the one before it. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 1 divided by 1 fifth is 5, and 1 fifth divided by 125, as difficult as that might seem right now, is also 5. So the common ratio is 5. Okay, so if those are my two values, then I can find my uh, explicit rule, by writing down f of n. Oh, first, let's check. Remember, always check, are you using position 1 or position 0? a is the initial term, 1 over 25, that's position 1. So use this one, right? You want n minus 1 as your power, not n. So f of n equals a. Actually, let me write the entire rule. And then we'll plug in. That's what, that's what we're using. Plug in a, which is 1 over 25, times r, which is 5, to the power of n minus 1. Done. All right, let's do recursive. Recursive over here on this side. For recursive rules, you need to tell me two things. F of something equals whatever it equals to. And F of something, I leave it blank because you have to make sure you double check. Is it F of 0 or F of 1? In this case, F of 1 right equals 1 over 25 f of 1 equals 1 over 25 and the rule f of n the next term equals r times f of n minus 1 
it always looks like that. The only thing you need to replace is the R. In this case, the R is 5. We already set that from before, from the explicit rule. It doesn't change. The common ratio is the same regardless of which rule you're using. And there you go. That is the recursive rule for that one. So once again, to uh, recap real quick, for the explicit rule, you need A and R. The formula you're going to use depends on if it's uh, position number 1 or position 0. If it's position 1, then you use n minus 1. If it's position 0, then you just use n. Notice that it's not multiplying. It's not r times n minus 1 like it was in an arithmetic sequence. It's r to the power of n minus 1. So the n or the n minus 1 are powers. This is not being added here. This is being multiplied, right? Because it's a geometric sequence. It's a, it's a multiplication type of pattern. For the recursive rule, you need two parts, just like you did for arithmetic sequences. You want to know what the initial term is, and you can write here f of 1 or f of 0, depending on which one they gave you. And then the, recur the actual rule here looks exactly the same in both forms. All you care about is what is the initial term, and then times f of n minus 1. This never changes. It means the previous term. To find the next term, multiply 5 times the previous term. And that's how you find it. Remember, they're just instructions on how to find the next terms. All right, I want you to go to your side and attempt problems number one and number two, which are the only ones that you guys have today. Okay, go ahead and try them out. Take uh, you have to do explicit and recursive. Um, I don't know what sounds fair. Like four minutes each, maybe five. Uh, take about five minutes for each one. So you guys can actually work them out correctly. So go ahead and pause the video right now. Work them out on your own. And then unpause it. Come back and check out what the correct answers are going to be. Okay, here you go. These are the correct answers for your side. Number one and number two. Uh, number one, the explicit rule. First, uh, I found that A is 1 over 27 and R is 3. The, ra the common ratio is 3. It's increasing by a, a multiple of 3. So your uh, explicit rule is 1 over 27 times 3 to the power of n, just n, not n minus 1, because it is the term position number 0 for that uh, initial term. The recursive rule, you tell me what the initial term is, f of 0 equals 1 over 27, and then the recursive rule always looks the same, the only thing that changes is the r value right here, which is 3. So f of n equals 3 times f of n minus 1, which again means to find the next term, Multiply 3 times the previous term, which is true. For number 2, the explicit rule, I found A to be 0 0.001, right, 1 1,000th, uh, and R is 10, because it's increasing by a power of 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, right? So my explicit rule is F of N equals 0 0.001 times 10 to the power of N minus 1, because the initial term is position 1. The recursive rule, you tell me what the initial term is, position 1 is 0 0.001, 1 1,000th, 1, and then you write that f of n equals uh, r times f of n minus 1, r is 10, so 10 times f of n minus 1, and that is all. Alright, you are responsible for this homework, and I will be checking all three homework assignments on Tuesday. All right. Have a good weekend. See you guys then.